Uh, it's, Guys, it's I'm recording. Uh, everyone, hello. Jackino, do you have a stock question for Danny? No. No? You don't, you don't have any questions? Okay. Scram, kids. You know, I get the feeling they don't know what scram means. You said he oh, was scramming, know. but he was right next to you. I was like, I'm scramming. <laughs> yeah, this is scramming, right? <laughs> Okay, so this screener is set up for value stocks. Um, I've got all the actual criteria that I've set up here. You want to have positive sale growth. You want to have positive earnings growth, positive dividend yield, ideally, uh, and a P ratio below 15. Anything over 15 isn't value. The average right now for the stock market, I believe, is at like 22, 23 times earnings. So you want to be below that figure uh, for it to even be arguably, arguably a valuable you know, a value stock. So it's already at 208, um, but you can go in there and it, let's say you want, I wish you could exclude, but you can't. But if you wanted exposure to a particular, particular sector or industry, you can go in here and just select from that. Um, I really wish you could do the opposite and exclude oil and gas, for instance, but you can't. So, uh, but you could go in there and, and just pick one that you'd like. Uh, I did mention utilities earlier, uh, which I do like as a long-term type of thing. Um, I would look at something like this, Exelon. Let's see what this looks like. So 4% dividend yield, 11 times earnings, one times sales. And still, even though it's up $7 off the low, it's actually not terrible and you get $1.50 back. So that would not be a bad long-term hold. It's, it's gone basically nowhere, which is what you ideally want for a dividend stock anyways, either nowhere or higher. <laughs> and that would be a winner for you because you're getting that 4% back every single year anyway. So had you bought uh, to, to, to in the middle of 2013, you'd have break even, but you have made seven years at 4%. So you'd be up 28, 30%, depending on if you're reinvesting dividends or not. Okay. Which is still excellent. So maybe instead, it, the value trading or, or any of these screeners, it should just be like one of your criteria that you look for. Like these are my value stocks, these are my swing stocks, these are my yeah. long, yeah. Yeah. So long term, uh, that's why I kind of bundle them together between long term and value. Um, so you're not, you don't get caught up just trading in and out of them at that point. If it's a long-term hold, you buy it. You don't even have to look at it more than like once a month. Um, if you did your homework and you're comfortable with it. All right, so let's do one for uh, swing trades. So this is the screener I would use for swing trading. Um, I've already set it up with the screen, the screeners that I would recommend. Um, what you're basically looking for is something that's that's been performing well above all else. You don't want to be trying to call a bottom on a stock. Um, and I would also warn against just buying something because it's been going up nonstop because you could end up with a Facebook situation where it starts, starts to turn down. Uh, you don't want to get stuck in that situation. So starting from uh, the top here, I did the market cap as always. Minimum is $300 million or I won't look at it. Uh, beyond that, relative strength. I don't want stocks that are, are performing in a, in a poor manner that are weak. So these have been performing moderately or at least decently well. Um, and then the same, the same notion behind that um, the stock has to be above the 200 day moving average, the 50 and the 20 day moving average. So it's, it's definitely been in a, on a positive trajectory, um, over the last 20, 50 and 200 days. Um, and over the last month as well, uh, it has been positive. So you'll see a lot of the uh, popular stocks that people really like owning, uh, on this list. Um, let's sort this this way, actually performance instead of market cap. Wow. Look at these freaking runners. So yeah, this is a good way to look at the swing charts. This one's gone up 60% this week. Wow. It's only Wednesday on a shortened week. <laughs> it's crazy. So um, so performance and you organized it by what? I sorted it by performance for the week here. Um, you're not going to want to chase after something that's gone up that much. Um, but ideally you want to get something that's going up at least. Um, so Spotify has been another huge outperformer. Um, you got to keep an eye on these. These type of swing trades, uh, you, you're going to want to try and get in on at least a little bit of weakness so you, you don't end up just buying way too high up. Um, and when obviously when you sort by the performer for the week, you're going to end up having ones that are um, not showing very much weakness. <laughs> so you might want to go in a few pages at that point to find something that's, that's uh, worth it. This one wouldn't be that bad, actually. I've looked at this one before. ACMR, it's a chip stock. Um, and it's got a pretty good risk reward here. It's never been above that level. Um, so you can buy it around this level, 57 or so, and, and say, you know what, if it goes below 50, which was the previous rally high in January, you cut your losses. Uh, on each share, it'd be a $7 loss uh, on this, this uh, delayed quote. Uh, but you're looking at possibly this thing going up to 70, 80, maybe even $90. So if it, it, if it does continue to run like this. So that's basically the, the rundown with, uh, with 
actual just swing trading and you want to be getting into stuff that other people like and, and has been performing well um, uh, rather than trying to call a bottom on something or, or trying to short something that you think finally is going to turn around. Uh, okay. the, the trend is your friend. It's a very tried and true uh, mantra. So you wouldn't try to look into stocks for swing trades that are like below an RSI of 30 and different things like that? You can, um, but then it gets more into you want to have the backing, uh, ideally, of, of the fundamentals at that point. So that if it gets a little bit, if it does go down some, uh, you still are comfortable owning it rather than if it's a pure swing trade, um, it's a technical thing entirely. So you want the technicals to all be lined up like stars, like all in your favor. Um, as opposed to trying to pick the black sheep that isn't doing well and saying, no, this one will start to perform well again. Um, that's why you want to go with the trend basically because of that and say, you know what, this thing's going up eight out of the last 10 days and it should continue to do so. And, and there's just, it's the odds are in your favor at that point, basically. And then also gap up, which I'm really confused about. I don't understand so why gaps people... are just, um, when the price of the stock or index, whatever the financial instrument you're looking at open significantly above or below um, the previous price. They, they just right, call it right. I, I understand that. But why would someone want to invest something that shot up in value already? People are stupid. <laughs> okay. <laughs> because something's up, people are more likely to continue paying for it and overpaying for it because they're like, oh, it's going up in price. It's kind of like housing 2007. People were flipping housing because houses kept going up in price until they don't. What, so a lot of people do this, though, where they'll, gap, they'll buy a stock that's gapped up and if it drops below that gap price of 5% or whatever you select, they, they cut their loss there. So you have a, a pretty tight uh, risk reward um, by just saying, you know what, I'm in unless this gap fails, basically, in the hopes that it continues to run at that point. Um, because typically the, the notion behind the whole, the whole gap like strategy and, and idea is that the price was undervalued to the point that now it's starting to mean revert and that's why you have that jump um and then the, the the hope is when people are buying that five ten percent markup from the day before is that it isn't just going to be five ten percent that it'll be you know 20 30 percent obviously it'll be higher than that and this is just the initial move so it tends to work um but you just got to be careful because you could just end up with the stock dropping uh perfect example today royal caribbean jumped up to 55 dollars to start the day it ended yesterday at 49. So, mm -hmm. I mean, it's a $6 jump and within an hour it was at $49. <laughs> wow. So it's something that if you're not careful, you can lose quite a bit of money. Yeah. Quickly. Yeah. Okay. All right. I think we, uh, we went through a bunch of cool fun screeners here that, uh, uh that I definitely learned a lot. Hopefully you did too. And, uh, you can use them in your repertoire of, uh, trading. So, uh, uh Danny, thanks again. And, uh, we'll, uh, we'll, uh, see you on the, the next video, right? Yeah. We're going to do more. Yes. <laughs> Catch you on the next one. <laughs> All right. I like that repertoire. Repertoire. <laughs> repertoire. <laughs>